Hey guys, Gilbert again. So check it out. I um, have tidied up a little bit, and what I'm doing right here is I'm I'm um, just kind of cleaning up the mold a little bit. What I wanted to show you guys is how I work with the one part mold, and then I'll go over <clears throat> how to make a two part mold. Again, the one part mold I'm just going to pour in flat this way, and if you find that it's sitting kind of crooked. You can always just trim off the edge. Okay. And um, I don't ordinarily work this way, but I'm just doing this for the demo. Um, in other words, I, I just put a little bit of plaster in this cup right here. I have some like uh, gravel from a project that I was working on and um, I also have some smaller mixing cups. And then over here, I've got my water. So I'm kind of ready to go. Ordinarily, what I like to do is put something down to protect my surface, but this is my working table, so I don't really care. I just sand it down, you know? So here's what I do with this gravel stuff. It's, um, I would go to like a train store or like a hobby shop or maybe Michael's, and they might have some of this stuff. Woodland Scenics sells it. What I'd like to do when I'm dealing with small uh, molds is just kind of fill up, fill up the mold a little bit, and that's going to give me an idea about how much material I should use, right? So the volume, more or less, is about that much in terms of the material. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit less because there's going to be um, some spaces in between the gravel. However, that's going to help me gauge how much material I should mix. Um, I could mix it in here and I might as well since um, it'd probably be easier to see. And again, I'm using some disposable um, silverware that I got from the, um, from any, you know, like a fast food. I could also just mix it in there, which might be easy, but since you guys don't have this, I just thought I would just do it like this for you guys. So always, always what I do is I add the water first, okay? to my bucket and then what I do in this case I'm just going to use a little spoon because I don't need very much I'm going to kind of sprinkle it around and what the sprinkling it around does is it allows the allows the mixture to sneak in between the particulate of the uh, of the plaster and it can minimize bubbles later so I'm just going to kind of fill that up until I get some islands forming. Now in this case, since my mold is pretty detailed, <clears throat> I want to make sure I have a pretty good mix of the material in the water. I don't necessarily need it to be super thick. The thicker the material is that you um, mix, the less um, likely or less, uh, there's my dog here, the less likely you'll be able to get um, the bubbles out. So for example, let's set this over here. This is a pretty thin mixture and I'm gonna kind of let the sediment come down. Ordinarily, I would mix it a little bit thicker, but since this is kind of a detailed part, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just keep it kind of thin. And I just wanna make sure all the lumps and glumps are out of it. Okay. And then I'm gonna give it a little bump and let the, let the plaster kind of take its own um, course in terms of getting the bubbles out. You can blow on it to pop the bubbles from the surface tension. But what I like to do is because this is a really thin mixture, bumping it down gets the heavier materials down and then I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in there. Okay. Whoop. So you can see I probably mixed twice as much. It was really easy. Um, this is hydrostone. Um, you could also use um, hydrocal, which is also a gypsum based plaster. Hydrocal and hydrostone in particular are extremely, um, they have a really high durometer, like really super hard. Um, the hydrostone is kind of cool because it doesn't ordinarily absorb or um, get affected by the water that it doesn't need. It just uses the water it needs to harden and then the rest of it will pool on top or it'll kind of kick it out. Um, this is the exact reason why you should never ever clean your stuff in your um, in your sink because the plaster will set up underwater and that means you will not be able to snake it out 
or dissolve it out with um, acids, you will have to change your plumbing. So please do um, create a separate uh, bucket with some water so that you can do cle a pre-cleanup. And then, then once everything's more or less uh, taken care of, then you can um, then you can use your sink to wash your hands. So what I'm going to do here is I, I usually give it a little bump, 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 bump. And what you saw me doing earlier was with my um, tool, I could also use a chopstick or a toothpick or whatever. I'm just kind of touching the surface of the mold because more often than not, the objects that we cast have the residues of being handled, which is uh, oils from our skin. Uh, it could even be just environmental dust and stuff like that, which will prevent and create a kind of a um, surface tension between the mold itself and the um, plaster. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to agitate it a little bit to break up the surface tension, if any, and maximize my chances of getting some decent detail. Now you can see these little bubbles coming up. That's because I had actually figured out there was some surface tension down there and I'm just kind of gently, gently brushing the surface of all that detail from that costume jewelry. And you can see what's happening. It's releasing a lot of the bubbles. If I have a bubble in my mold, you'll see later that um, it'll show up as a negative space. So I'm gonna just let this set. Um, I feel pretty good about it um, in terms of the bubbles, but you know, we'll just see. So I usually do the shaky shake for a little bit. And then what you can do is you can use a stick or a popsicle stick and I usually just wipe it off back into my box. I'm sorry, my bowl there. And, um, and now what I can do is I can just wait for this to set up and we'll come back and check it out in about, um, in about a half an hour. In warm climates, you're probably gonna um, only need to wait about 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, in cold and damp, it may take a bit longer. You can also accelerate the curing of this with um, hot water, but be mindful that it, when it kicks off, it really goes fast. Okay guys, I'll catch up with you next.